Hello, thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel, click on the bell, like and comment.
Hello, thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel, click on the bell, like and comment.
Silence, we are reflecting on the redemptive work of Christ on the cross. David said, What is man but thou art man full of, and the son of man but thou visited him? Who is you? Who are you? That he should come down from his throne and die the painful death for our stead. And declare it is finished. On Calvary, before
invite our sister to read for us First Kings chapter 19 from verse 1 to 10. Eunice, okay, you read for us First Kings chapter 19, verse 1 through to 10. So we'll be there in quiet. Hello, thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel, click on the bell, like and comment. told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with a sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servants there. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom, a broom back bush, sorry, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around and, and there by his head, was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then he lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb. The mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with a sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The word of the Lord. We are about to be fed food that we have never experienced. This morning as we take our seats. Bread of heaven. Feed me to the Lord. Fill my heart. Professor William Uchu Ellis is preaching to us. He is the director of the children's ministry of the Church of Pentecost worldwide and he's our associate minister. Let's receive the word of God. Praise the Lord. you to reflect this morning even as we come to dine with the Lord what are your expectations what are your expectations
These are special moments. And I don't want us to take it as one of the nominal times that we come to church, take the bread and the wine, and then we go back, and that is that. This morning, what are your expectations as you come to dine with the Lord? Father, we want to thank you for this morning and for this opportunity, O oh God, that we have to fellowship and dine with you. We pray in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that it will not just be another Sunday, but that today, O oh God, will be one of a difference. Dear Holy Spirit, speak unto us. Minister unto our spirits and our souls. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As I've already said, this morning is another special one. An opportunity to share intimate fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a communion day, and I pray that the joy of the Lord will fill our hearts. The past week, we have been having the program termed Kratos. We have engaged the Lord under the broad theme, Bread from Heaven. And it's been based on the scripture that my dear sister read to us. That is 1 Kings 19, 1 to 10. Today is the climax for this program. And also an opportunity to dine with the Lord. And therefore I want to continue in the same vein. And I want to look at, us to look at the 1 Kings 1, the 1 Kings 19, 1 to 10. But I want us to read something from Zechariah 5, Zechariah 2, verse 5. This is a scripture that through the past week has been a great encouragement to me. And I believe that as we read it, the Spirit of God would also speak to your hearts. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 5. For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire all around her, and I'll be the glory in her midst. For I, the, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire all around her, and I'll be the glory in her midst. Can we translate it to our own life? This way, for I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire all around me, and I'll be the glory in his midst. Amen. Every child of God has a hedge of fire around him. If we walk with the Lord obediently, there is a wall of fire around us. This wall of fire is built by the Lord. The evil one recognizes this and always keeps a distance. Therefore, no matter the challenges we go through, let us always strive and continue to abide under the shadow of the Most High God. Amen. Whatever the challenges that we go through, let us strive and continue as children of God to abide under the shadow of the Most High. We've just read or heard from 1 Kings 19, 1 to 10. The passage is about one of the most significant prophets of God recorded in scripture. But to better appreciate and put it in the right context, 
It will be good to look at from 1 Kings 17, 1 Kings 18, so that we can have an appreciation of this great prophet of God. And in that context, I want to highlight some few things from these two chapters. The prophet Elijah is one of the prophets who demonstrated great courage before the king called King Ahab. And he did this in his presence, in his palace, and also on the Mount Carmel. The prophet Ahab pronounced drought in the land. This is from 1 Kings 17, which persisted for almost three years. When I looked at the scripture and I looked at the word drought, sometimes we relate it only to rain. But in this scripture, it says dew and rain. Normally, dew is in the morning. When we wake up in the morning, we see some small touches of uh, moisture all over. But the prophet's pronouncement even eliminates the fact that that aspect of moisture can happen. Everything was dry. Prophet Elijah had also witnessed God's miraculous provision to the widow at Zarephath, also in 1 Kings 17. He had challenged the prophets of Baal, who number about 450, and Asherah, numbering four. Thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel. Click on the bell, like, and comment. Numbering 400 who eat at Jezebel's table to a contest on Mount Carmel. And when we read it in 1 Kings 18, Elijah defeated them and then went on and killed all the 450 bad prophets and virtually bringing the worship of Baal to a halt. He had also challenged the children of Israel to decide whom they will serve, whether they will serve the living God or they will serve the God of Baal. In 1 Kings 18, 21, at the end of the day, when God's presence and miracle had taken place, the hearts of the children of God, children of Israel actually, turned to that of God. And when they saw those great signs, great wonders of God, they all bowed and pronounced that the Lord is God. Amen. Elijah had also witnessed on Mount Carmel as he called to the Lord, the fire of God fall. And this fire consumed the burnt offering sacrifice that he had made. The wood on which the sacrifice had been placed was also consumed. The stones were also consumed. The dust was, were also, con was also consumed. And the fire licked up the water that were in the trenches. Virtually, the whole altar was consumed by the fire of the living God. This, for me, is a very fearful sight because it shows the power of God at work. The prophet Elijah had been part of all this and he had experienced it. After these encounters, then, he also witnessed the coming of the rain 
he had pronounced drought, and at the same time he was telling King Ahab that rain was on its way coming. And therefore asking Ahab to move faster and get into the city before the heavy rains come. And under the unction of God, he outran King Ahab to the gates of Jezreel. This is the man of God we just read about in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. A prophet who has wrought great and miraculous victory against a king. And when you read 1 Kings 16, it says that King Ahab is one of the kings of Israel who had provoked God to great anger. When you compare him to his predecessors. And so you can just imagine when this king is put to shame. Of, with respect to all that had happened in 1 Kings 18. There is total humiliation. There is total defeat. Virtually, there is the erasing of one of the semblance of bar worship, which is the killing of the prophets. Because when you kill all the 450 prophets of Baal, then the question is, who is going to continue that worship? So, Prophet Elijah was a very powerful prophet, full of signs and wonders. Then as we read from 1 Kings 19, when King Ahab went back and told the wife, Jezebel, all that has transpired at Mount Carmel, it is obvious that Jezebel will get angry. And realistically, when I look at it, Prophet Elijah should expect that there will be anger and fury. However, when the message came from Jezebel's messenger to him, threatening to execute him or do the same as he had done within a day, because of Jezebel's reaction and furious nature, she had even pledged with a vow to do likewise to Elijah as he had done. As human as Elijah was, fear grips him. And possibly some disappointments. This great man of God, we read, decides to run for his life. And I just try to play it in my head. Imagine, this is a spectacular thing that had happened on Mount Carmel. The fire from heaven descend, burn everything, not even the burnt sacrifice. But all the altar had been consumed. If the media was there, the people of Israel all bow and say that the Lord is God. I'm just imagining the media banner headline. The prophet of God, prophet Elijah, defeats and kills all the 450 prophets of Baal. Huge banner headline. Glory, praise to the most high God. Then, within some few days, another banner comes. The great man of God runs for his life. Because Queen Jezebel just issued an instruction. That is the scenario that the media would have captured nicely. As human as Elijah was, fear gripped him. And maybe possibly mixed with disappointment, the great man of God decides to run for his life. The Bible says that he goes to Bathsheba, which is in the territory of Judah. Judah is another territory different from Israel. 
So there's a possibility that Jezebel cannot cross over to Judah because Elijah had entered. And I believe that Elijah was now using human plants to do what? To try and protect himself. So he makes that journey to Bathsheba with the consideration that here I can have some respite. Then the Bible says that he leaves his servant there and then continues a day's journey into the wilderness. The wilderness is an open field. When you are searching for someone in the wilderness, it is not easy. You have to roam about and spend a lot of time to be able to do that, get the person. When he gets to the wilderness, he finds a broom tree with shade and then he lies under it. Then the next thing that follows is that he prays to God. And his prayer is that it is enough. It is enough. Lord, take my life. I am not better than my four fathers or predecessors. Just take my life. This is the great man or great prophet Elijah. And this is his prayer. God. I want to bring this home. As we are listening to it, we may see it as more of Elijah's uh, problem. But a lot of us go through the same situation. Sometimes things start going very well. Everything is working out well for us. Business is doing well. My Christian life is doing well. My prayer life is on. Everything is okay. I'm very happy. Money is coming. Things are going well. Everything that I've placed before God, I see responses and all that. Then all of a sudden, at another time, there's a turn around. Everything starts dipping, coming down. Problems here, problems there, and all that. Then we start questioning ourselves. Sometimes we forget that we are even Christians. Then we start using human tactics to try and find answers to the issues. As I was preparing the message, I remembered when I joined KNUSC as a young lecturer. After so many years, things were hard. Then we were able to buy a car. Then we were happy. And at a point, I was not feeling very well. So I was driving from campus. Laboratories were not many. The few ones were closer to Confanochi. And I was going to uh, do a test. As I was going, brother, I was singing some worship songs and all that in the car. Then a small girl just crossed me. And then I hit the girl. It went, the girl went up and hit the windscreen. And fell back. As I stopped, and I went out and I picked the girl and I put the girl at the back seat. I tested the pulse. There was no response. I was confused. All of a sudden, there was a mechanic nearby, a young man who came to sit in front, in the front seat. He said, let's go. I don't know this man. So we started driving to Confanochi. In fact, the Swami ran about. I, I turned it twice without knowing. I turned and turned again because I was confused. I had even forgotten that I'm a child of God and I have to start praying. Thank God, a young man who... started blasting tongues started blasting tongues and tongues and tongues then then i came back to my senses and i also started speaking in tongues then when i turn and i look at the girl the young man will tell me don't look just drive just drive so we went through got into bantuma as we are going but everything the very moment we stopped at the polyclinic 
When I stopped, the girl just shouted. The girl shouted at the back. Then a sigh of relief came upon me. And then I took the girl, young girl, carried her. And then the doctor started insulting me. But the way they dealt with me, I started crying. Then a colleague of mine, who is a medic, also a lecturer, just appeared and said, William, sometimes we speak pigeon amongst ourselves. He said, William, what can you do here? Then I said, oh, I've, I've had this challenge. He said, oh, the young girl, they just brought the young girl to the theater. He's, he's a surgeon. He said, don't worry, don't cry. The girl will be okay. To cut a long story short, the girl survived, but it wasn't an easy experience. So here was I, a young man, who had a new car. Well, everything seems to be going well. All of a sudden, just all of a sudden, everything dropped. And then you are asking yourself, is the girl going to die? A lot of us are going through experiences like this, and so many are happening. So what Elijah went through, we, can, we may also be going through. At certain times, some of us even come to the point of saying that, Father, I cannot go on anymore. It will be better for me to do what? To die. Why don't you end it here? Like Elijah's prayer. A lot of people have prayed the same prayer in one form or the other. The good point is that the word of God captures our situation. What we go through every time, the word of God captures it. Elijah is an example of what we also go through. And the good thing is that the word of God also provides us with answers. That is how good God is. The word of God is there. It captures all our situations of life and also provides us with answers. As we just heard from our young sister, as she read, every step of the way, you see the presence of God with Elijah. Throughout the process, sometimes you feel when Elijah started escaping, running for his life, the feeling is that God is not there. And therefore, I'm using my mind. Gets to Bathsheba, nothing. Then gets to the wilderness, resting under the broom tree. Then there is a tap. If the angel could identify him in the wilderness, it means that God had tracked him all the way. Every step of the way, God was moving with him. But at God's appointed time, God did what? God touched him and said, My son, Get up and eat. This morning, God's word to you and to myself is that He is with you. His presence is with us. God's presence is still with you. Therefore, no matter the situation, as a child of God, always remember that God's presence is with you. The Lord has not abandoned us. Not at all. God has not abandoned us. The Lord always empathizes with our situation because he knows everything concerning his children. In Hebrews 4, 15 and 16, we read, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Amen. From the scripture that was read from First Kings, one of the things that we see with respect to God's attribute, which was exhibited during Elijah's situation, is his love and care. God's love and care throughout the process. Sometimes you may think that God is not watching, 
God is not officiating all that you are doing. God appreciates them. The sacrifices you make in the vineyard, the giving that you give in the vineyard, the support to others that you give in the vineyard, God appreciates all of them. The prayers that you pray, the fasting that you do, God appreciates all of them. And God loves you and cares for you. God showed this through his continual presence with Elijah. His provisions to Elijah were all part of his nature of love. His protection, which he offered to Elijah, and his guided directions as he went on. When you look at it, Elijah went from Jezreel all the way to the mountain of God at Horeb. All these processes, God had guided him all along. The question is, why should Elijah have gone to the mountain of Horeb? Somebody who is asking God to kill him or to let him die. Why would you go to God? But the prophet Isaiah, in the prophet in the book of Isaiah, we see this love of God nicely captured in Isaiah 43, 1 to 4. He says, But now, thou says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. This is very reassuring. I have called you by my name. You are mine. Amen. It's a very powerful, powerful statement from God. That he, the Lord, has called you by the his name and that you belong to him and no one else when you pass through the waters I will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overflow you when you walk through the fire you shall not be burned nor shall the flames scorch you for I am the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel your Savior I gave Egypt for your ransom a whole kingdom nation egypt god gave it because of his children ethiopia and silver in your place since you were precious in my sight you have been honored and i have loved you what a reassuring scripture because of you because of god's love for you God can exchange every situation just because of you. I remember there was a time when I was going to be inducted into office as the vice chancellor. I had traveled and I was spending time with God. And I had a cousin whose wife, when she dreams, it comes to pass. She doesn't dream anyhow, but when she dreams, it comes to pass. And her dream was that I would die before the induction. She was afraid to tell me. Yes, at the same time, she was praying quietly. So fear had gripped her. And every possibility was that it will happen. Then I was outside in the UK. So I asked my wife to attend a funeral in my village. So my wife went, and then an encounter happened. Some of my relatives were not nice to my wife. So my wife just donated the money she had to donate, sat in the vehicle with the driver, and then they left. Just at that moment, a relative went into crisis, and the vehicle they were looking for was my vehicle. But my wife had just left. Hold it up, hold it there, hold it there. Before they got to the hospital, the relative was gone. So during the induction, I was sitting down. After, during the program, I was sitting down and I was crying. So when we finished then, 
my brother's wife came to me and narrated the incident. Then I started playing it back and asking God some questions. Then I realized that what was set to get into motion would truly have happened. But God's hand was just doing everything. And because God loves me, because his name is upon me, it doesn't matter. God can decide and replace the situation with another situation. So he said that I gave up Egypt as a ransom for you. There are a lot of us sitting here. So many things are happening in our lives. Sometimes we are not conscious of it. But because of God's love, God would always make sure that he redeems us. Amen. So this morning I want to encourage you. No matter the circumstances, stay under the umbrella of God. As Prophet Elijah rested under the tree in the wilderness. was awoken and fed twice by the angel of the Lord with cake baked on coals and a jar of water. This cake is the bread from heaven. The angel of God came and fed Elijah, woke him up and then fed him. The bread from heaven gave him life once again. It gave Elijah sustenance. It brought revival to Elijah. It restored his strength. It caused him to go 40 days and 40 nights without any food. The bread from heaven signifies the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the bread from heaven. And he gives life. Life came back to Elijah again, and his situation was different. So in John 6, 32 to 33, it states, Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my father gives bread, true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life the world. The bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Therefore when one puts on Christ when Jesus Christ is in us it brings renewal it brings a change it brings sustenance it brings strength it brings hope it changes our language and it brings breakthrough. There's something very interesting when you look at the verses we read from 1 Kings 19. Under the broom tree, Elijah was asking that God take my life. It is enough. However, in verse 9, when he was asked, what are you doing here? Elijah. Verse 10, the first thing he starts with is that I am zealous for the Lord of hosts. When I look at it, I ask myself, this same person who said, it is enough, I want to die. Take my life. Now you go to God, when he asks you, what do you want to do here? Is it not to say that, Lord, I have come. Take my life. And let me die. Is that not the answer to give? Because that's my objective. Now he gets to God, and then the next thing that follows is that, God, I am zealous for the Lord of hosts. They have done this, they have done this, they have done, and they are planning to do what? To take my life as well. His language has done what? Has changed. That negative perception that he was holding, because the bread from heaven came into his life, 
life came back to him again. Now in the presence of God, the picture is what? Different. He speaks positively. Now he's trying to talk about his own achievements. His zealousness in so many ways. It has come back again. Let us stick with God. No matter the situation, so far as the Holy Spirit lives in you, so far as Christ Jesus, the bread of heaven, from heaven, is with us, there is life in us. There is hope in us. Our language should not be negative. Our language should be what? Positive. Because at his appointed time, your breakthrough will do what? Would come. The giving of the bread also symbolizes God's covenant with his children. We see this in the last supper event when Christ met his disciples. He broke bread and gave wine and said this is the new covenant. Therefore the last supper is a tangible reminder that Jesus Christ is our life giving bread from heaven. So this morning as we are here, that's why I asked, what are your expectations? It is a tangible reminder. And so for me, communion service is always, I call it, a time of remembrance. A time of remembrance of what the Lord has done for us. And for me, the Lord has done so many wonderful things. But the most important is the fact that he has given me, he has saved me, and he's given me eternal life. Amen. So I have hope. You have hope. And that is what we have to look forward to. This morning, I don't know your state. It may be that of disappointment. It may be that of sadness. It may be that of uncertainties. It may be that of difficulties. It may be that of joy. Whatever it is, as we prepare to come to dine with the Lord, remember the bread from heaven. The emblems here, one of them signifies the bread from heaven. It is God's gift to us. It changed Elijah's situation. When you read further, you realize that the ending of Elijah was very glorious. Very, very glorious. In fact, when you, you look at his autobiography, you ask yourself, why did this portion of Jezebel come in? The story would have been nice if Jezebel's portion had been what? Taken away. But the story becomes so beautiful because Jezebel's portion is there which shows the distinction between our human nature and the presence of the Holy Spirit and the workings of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. When the Holy Spirit was at work in Elijah, when God's presence was with him, it was a different situation. When the human nature comes in, what happens? Fear grips him. And therefore he does what? He goes by his own human ideas. Let us pray and have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's allow Christ to dwell mightily in us. The bread from heaven is God's gift to us. He shows God's love for us. And I pray that as we receive it by faith this morning, we may experience God's great love. Amen. And that it may change our your life situation and change my life situation as it happened to the prophet Elijah. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you are going through difficulty or challenging situation in any form, I want to bring us into remembrance that we have a high priest who sympathizes and empathizes with whatever situation you find yourself. There is nothing you are passing through that he has not passed through. He understands 
And he's saying this morning that have confidence. Rise up from the ashes and draw near to the throne of grace and receive mercy and find grace. Grace is waiting to help you. And as you receive the bread from heaven this morning, may you receive that grace for breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. The presence of God is here this morning. I want us to bow down our heads. And I want us to do an introspection. Let's have some reflections. Look at your own life. Look at what Christ has done in your own life. Where Christ has taken you from. Where he has brought you. The state where you are. Do an introspection of yourself. Look at God's love in your life. God's faithfulness concerning our lives. God's goodness to us. God's provisions day in and day out. At this moment, I want you to open your lips and say something to the Lord, to our Father. Let us pray. Father, this morning we want to thank you once again. Lord God, we thank you for the work at Calvary. We thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice. That you give at Calvary. Lord, all because of me and all because of us. That we, those who do not matter, O oh God, we, those who are not counted, Father, today, because of your work at Calvary, we have hope. Thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel. Click on the bell, like, and comment. Our situations have changed. We have encountered, O oh God. We have the opportunity to sit at table with you and to share fellowship. We have the opportunity for eternal life. And Father, all we want to say is that, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this great work. We thank you for the bread from heaven. It changed Elijah's life. It changed his situation. We pray that, Lord, this morning, even as we take the bread from heaven, which is symbolized by the bread on the table, and as we take the wine, which symbolizes your body, or your blood, sorry. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that we shall not remain the same again. But today will be a day of difference. Today will be a day of change. Today will be a day of transformation. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let's bless the man of God. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But it was worth it. It was easy. It was easy. It was easy. It was easy. Sorry, please be asked. It was easy. It was not easy on the cross of Calvary. of all those who go through similar experiences child of God it wasn't easy for him the son of God God himself but if it was not easy for him he went through it so that it will be easy with you so we can go through this morning he places before us the bread of life and he said come and take it rise up and take it as you take it you will be strengthened by the power of the food to set down in this life without getting weary. Shall we stretch our hands towards it together, children of God, and pray that God feed me with your very self. As I come to your table, it wasn't easy for you, but you went through it so I will have it easy. And sail through it all. Help me, Lord. I come to the Lord's table every time, but today, Lord, give me a new perspective altogether. Let me have the heavenly meal, the bread from heaven, that will heal me from infirmity, that will touch the very core of my solution. As the man of God said, God is always having the solution to our situation. His word always identifies our situations. And deal with it. It wasn't easy. It was Lift your voice and pray. Oh Lord, lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice. Lift your voice and pray. 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 Lift your voice and I will bounce back. I will bounce back prayerfully. I will bounce back studiously study the word of God. I will bounce back with alacrity. I will seal. I will bounce back. 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 Father, we declare this emblem sanctified by your blood and by your word and through the name that is above every other name. And we declare today, as we come to you, may we be strengthened by the power of the food and the efficacy of this blood. I pray, God, that destinies will be revived, 
I pray that sickness will be healed, infirmities will be jettisoned. I pray that, oh God, new areas of life will be discovered. I pray for new dimensions of our spiritual, financial, physical life will come to the fore and we will see when we have dinner with the Lord he changed every situation concerning our life to favor us may the name of the Lord be praised now and forever Amen humbly take your seats as I invite the officers to come quickly it wasn't easy it was some challenging moments that after you take this uh, you will have a testimony in your life that uh, all your struggles are over uh, he carried our burdens on the cross and said i have overcome the night he was betrayed he took the bread can we take the bread together give thanks and said this is my body eat it in remembrance of me after that he took the cup bless it and said this is the blood in the new covenant Drink it in remembrance of me. As often as you eat and drink, remember the Lord's death until he comes. May the Lord strengthen us as leaders. May the Lord give us grace. Amen. Shall we humbly take us? It wasn't easy. One elder, one dickie, one dickiness up on my left. One elder, one dickie, one dickiness on my right. One elder, one dickie, one dickiness. One elder, one dickie, one you wait but once you are baptized nothing stops you from coming to the last table except you because you see when the angel of the Lord touched Elijah and said rise up and eat the choice was his to either eat or reject the food God is giving us the choice to eat the food or reject the food but you see as the man of God read from John chapter 6 this is the bread of life oh. if I were you I would choose life I would choose life so you come from behind once you take it you pray about it and you eat it you eat it don't wait for anybody just eat it and continue to pray to the glory of god Amen. he makes the world the spirit and comes the trouble oh this man
Hello, thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel, click on the bell, like, and comment.
when we are drunk. Transform us physically. Transform us spiritually. Let this week be a week of testimony of your faithfulness to us. We thank you and praise you for the sacrifice in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray. Shall we say a big amen? Yeah. Let's take our seat. Mosheno, Wasebia no so, Alright, we'll prepare ourselves and pay our tithes and all things. Today is closing of tithes for me. Uh, please try to clear all your indebtedness with heaven. Because today heaven has given you a special meal. So you need to clear all the areas. When we finish, we take mission of the mission of Let's take our time and do it. Uh, let's take our time and do it. God bless you. Menina Asa O Yesu Mojane Mo Alleluia Wene Wene Yo Yo
Lord, put your hands together for the Lord. 